intentionally slowing down the eccentric for 3 to 5 seconds and pausing in stretch position doesn't give you any more stimulus than a faster eccentric would. But doesn't the eccentric and the stretch build more muscle? Isn't it more hypertrophic? No, it is not. Because the eccentric portion of a movement has half the muscle activation levels that the concentric has. Which means that the concentric is the most hypertrophic part of the movement. As we know, motor unit recruitment and mechanical tension are the two main mechanisms for hypertrophy. And when do these two mechanisms kick in? When you go close or to failure on an exercise. And when does that happen? For the 99% of cases, on the concentric part of the movement. If you had concentric failure on an exercise, you have still so much more strength left on the eccentric. You can still crank out 10 more forced eccentric reps with a partner, which is the reason why the activation levels on the eccentric is half the amount than compared to the concentric, because you're just so much stronger on the eccentric compared to the concentric, which is the reason why the concentric is the most hypertrophic part of the movement, because you're utilizing those high threshold motor units. Doesn't that mean that you can completely throw out the eccentric just doing cheat reps? just doing bouncy reps and focusing on the concentric? No, you cannot. The concentric part of the movement activates active mechanical tension and the eccentric part of the movement activates passive and active mechanical tension. The adaptation you get from passive mechanical tension is already maxed out if you are not a complete beginner, but you still want to keep these adaptations by controlling the eccentric and not absolutely ranking your weights. So of course, you still want to have an eccentric tempo and control. You shouldn't use a tempo that is too fast, that it will fuck up your joints, your tendons. And you want to pick a tempo that standardizes your technique, which will help you to progressive overload and track the progressive overload over a long period of time. Injury prevention and standardized form are the only two benefits of a slower tempo, but there's also a downside. So the stretch portion of a movement gives you more muscle damage and fatigue, compared to the concentric part of the movement or the shoulder position, which means that if you're increasing the time spent in the stretch position by doing three to five second eccentrics or pausing the bottom stretch portion of the movement for several seconds, you will increase the muscle damage and fatigue you get from that exercise without any additional stimulus related benefits. After all the tapping, what is the best eccentric tempo you can use? Is it one second, two seconds, three seconds or even five? You should not intentionally slow down the eccentric to hit a number like 3 or 5 seconds, but you should use the tempo that feels the best for you, so you can feel in control of the weight and not that the weight is controlling you. It doesn't matter whether the tempo is 1 or 5 seconds long, as long as you feel in control of the weight, and yes, you can control a wave with a 1 second fast eccentric, it is a good tempo for you for that specific exercise. What do I mean by specific exercise? So not every exercise needs the same eccentric tempo or control. For example, a preacher curl, which is very, very heavy in the stretch position, needs a slightly slower eccentric tempo so it can ease in into the stretch and not fuck your shit up. And because the biceps has the best leverage over the other elbow flexors in the stretch position, it is actually a benefit if you milk that time that you spend in the stretch position by deliberately or intentionally slowing down the eccentric. Now, on the other hand, if you are doing a dumbbell hammer curl, for example, where you want to hit the brachialis and the brachioradialis, which already have more leverage than the biceps because of the neutral hand position. And because the dumbbells are the hardest in the shoulder position due to gravity, you can just horse cock the weight and not focus too much on the eccentric. As I mentioned in the intro, pausing in the stretch position or even contracted position doesn't, for the most part, give you any additional hypertrophic benefit. But it could be utilized to an advantage if you are a smart cookie and you know which muscles have the best leverage in the stretch position or shorter position. For example, the chest, quads, biceps, and calves actually benefit from stretch means hypertrophy, which means that if you pause for just a brief moment in the stretch position, you could get additional benefit, hypertrophic benefit. Pausing also has the benefit of, again, standardizing your range of motion, maybe injury prevention due to you getting more comfortable in the stretch position. Stretch position. What the fuck was that, brother? Which could save you on a bad day when you fucked up your eccentric and you didn't pause because you've owned that weight before and did the pause in that stretch position. Your tendons, ligaments, joints, blah, 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 got stronger and you will not injure yourself due to uh, abrupt movements. I think that was correct English. We don't live in theory bodybuilding land. Let's come to some practical examples. For the calves, I always, 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 always stretch my calves at the bottom position for at least 3 seconds due to the Achilles tendon being the strongest tendon in the body, which means that it is storing force or energy better, which means that if you're doing bouncy reps or touch and go reps with calves, 
the calves are not actually working, but the Achilles tendon. And if you do a three to five second pause in the stretch position, you can take out the Achilles tendon from doing any work, which means that only your calves will be getting the stimulus or be doing the work. And additionally, because the calves actually benefit from stretching with hypertrophy, the extended pause in a stretch position gives you more stimulus. Now, on the other hand, for short and biased exercises and muscles that benefit from those type of exercises, for example, the glutes and hip thrusts, you want to pause in a contracted position for just a brief moment or a few seconds to really own that position and spend the most time there where the muscle has the best leverage and where it can produce the most growth. It wouldn't make any sense to pause in the stretch position or in the bottom position of hip thrust because the muscle has no tension or leverage there, which means that you should use the eccentric to get as fast as possible to the concept again to pause there and not in the stretch position which wouldn't give you any benefit. Now, to a unique example, I've always paused my chest exercises or bench presses to spend more time in the stretch position, to standardize my form, etc. But nowadays, I just go touch and go. I control the eccentric, I don't bounce out of the bottom. I still have control over that weight. And this type of technique feels much better to me than an intentional pause just to standardize my form or to spend more time in the stretch position. Don't always listen to the science or what is more optimal on paper. Also, make sure to listen to your intuition, listen to your body, and see what feels best for you. If you haven't been living under a rock, you should know that time under tension is dead. Being as explosive and as powerful on the concentric part of the movement is so important if you want to get the best hypertrophic results. Mechanical tension, which is one of the main mechanisms of hypertrophy, only kicks in if you involuntarily slow down on the concentric part of the movement, which means that you want to push the weight off of you with as much force, with as much speed as possible, but you just cannot because you're fully exhausted the energy that your muscle fibers have had for that set and you cannot push yourself anymore. And this process, as I said, can only happen if you involuntarily slow down on the concentric. This means that you have to voluntarily be as explosive as possible to the point that you cannot be. This should mean that you should yank the weight around, but be as explosive as possible with as much control as possible. Move the weight with your actual muscle and not your whole body. Now let's come to some unique situations where faster tempo, slower tempo, or even skipping the eccentric would be of benefit. My goal right now is to get my spinal erectors as thick and as dense as fucking possible. Therefore, I listen to the person that has the most knowledge on this topic, Jordan Peters. I ask him personally what I should do to achieve a thick look and he recommended stiff leg deadlifts while skipping the eccentric completely. So this means that I'm only concentrating on the concentric, saving my energy. As we know, the eccentric part of the movement takes our energy away due to the increased muscle damage and fatigue, which means that I can only focus on the concentric, which John Peters deems as holy for spinal erectors, and skip out the eccentric. John Peters said it, so I will fucking do it. You can bet my ass on it. You can have whatever you want, my sword or my ass. <laughs> now let's say you have a maxed out machine, but you have to fucking have it in the program. For me, it would be the adductor machine. I'm maxed out with extra weights stacked onto it or pinned onto it. That is why i pausing in a fully contracted position, really owning that part of the movement and also in a stretch position. This allows me to use less weight because I'm limiting myself in that department with that slow and deliberate tensional Control. Now let's come to the other part of the spectrum, going from completely controlled to completely loose form. Some exercises just feel better with an oomph. It most likely is a result of the resistance profile of that specific exercise you're doing and where the muscle that is performing that exercise has the most leverage. And besides that, it just feels cool to horse cock some heavier weights. As I said, slower eccentrics, pausing in the shortened or stretch position is a viable tool to prevent injuries or even to rehab injuries which means that you can still train a muscle which you have injured or which has pain and aches by reducing the weight through manipulating your tempo. For example, my shoulder is absolutely fucked up right now. I don't know why. And I'll put a clip right on the screen where I'm doing slow reps, controlled throughout the entire range of motion, a little bit higher reps maybe to minimize the pain in that specific area and the pain I get while that specific exercise, which means that I can still grow muscles or you can still grow muscles while being fucked up. So just use the tempo and type of technique that feels the most comfortable for you, depending on the exercise, depending on the situation. And if you want to feel the most comfortable, knowing that you're following the right program, that you're doing all the things right to potentiate the program to get you as direct as possible, 
make sure to check the links down below for my programs or sign up for my coaching. See you, brother. Doof, 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 doof.